Hi, everyone. I'm Barb Paldus, the founder and CEO of Codex Beauty Labs. I would like to personally welcome each and every one of you to our Codex Beauty Labs Inform Not Influence discussion as we launch our newest collection, Onto. This collection has been two years in the making, and we are proud to present to you our first two products, the Brightening Moisturizer and the Brightening Night Cream. I would like to thank the entire team at Codex for all of their hard work and make a special shout out to our partners at An Active in Chile who are with us today. Veronica, Kiki, Jorge, and Guy, I'm so glad I met you at Cosmoprof in Las Vegas two years ago. I'm even more excited to be sharing this moment with Stephanie Shepard. Steph is an amazing environmental advocate and we have loved partnering with her over the last year. I will hand it over to Steph to introduce herself. Hey everyone. Um, thank you, Barb. This is, I mean, you know I love Codex. I've been a fan for so long. We've been working together for a while now. We've gotten to do these fun discussions and I swear I always learn something. So if you see me taking notes, like I've got my pen and my pad because you really are an incredible wealth of information. So I'm so glad that we get to have this conversation and people get to learn along with me um, about the new Antu collection. So um, I don't wanna waste any time. I'd love to get right into it and talk about uh, this new collection. Um, so Antu um, is based on ingredients from the Patagonian rainforest is what I understand. And so I'd love for you to kind of elaborate a little bit more and talk about that. Sure. So, and I learned this from our Chilean friends that Antu is the most powerful pilon spirit. So they have spirits in the mythology of the Mapuche native people in Chile. And it represents the sun as well as light, wisdom. And the spirit was said to have created the Andes Mountains where we source our ingredients. And so the Antu collection harnesses these bioactives from Patagonian plants long valued by the Mapuche for their protecting and healing properties. And we've combined this tribal knowledge with modern biotechnology, genetic science, state-of-the-art formulation, it's what Codex is and what we do, as well as though partnerships with local Mapuche wild harvesters through Enactive, and then a very high-tech GMP, EcoSur, you know, all the certs manufacturing facility in Europe. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, the thoughtfulness that goes behind the lines that you do. I don't know if anyone is not familiar with um, Codex, could you tell us a little bit about you know, um, the beauty code and the efficacy panels and everything. Sure. So we consider ourselves a biotech company rather than a beauty company because we're so grounded in science. Um, mm -hmm. We're also very dedicated to the microbiome, um, which is very important for the skin barrier and pioneer products that we clinically prove because then you actually have meaningful quantitative skin benefits. And really our vision all along has been to blend ethnobotany, which is the study um, of ethnic and tribal medicines with plant biology. So modern technology, biotechnology, and thereby create a new standard called plant-based biotech beauty. Um, our really our core mission is to demonstrate quantitative data and all aspects of our beauty code are about that because we think it's not only important for making progress in the beauty industry, like in biotech, right? If we didn't have that kind of data, we wouldn't have COVID vaccines today, but it's essential for customers to make really fact-based decisions going forward to buy functional products and also at the best possible price. Because otherwise, how do you know like what the difference is between an $800 vitamin C product and a $3 vitamin C product, right? That's so that. we're leading the way in adopting scientific and data-driven approaches. And our code is all about ingredient sourcing, product safety, product efficacy, but also, I mean, to and you'll appreciate this, to the sustainability and biodiversity of the planet. Um, because at the end of the day, we, we have to keep our planet, not just make customers happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. And I love that um, holistic approach that you guys take, that it's about the consumer. It's, you know, the company has these sustainable practices and you're thinking about the impact that your products will make on the earth and this planet. It's so important. And that's why I love this line so much. Um, so you mentioned the skin barrier. Um, so I know that this, the goal of the Antu collection is to protect the skin barrier. And I know you use ingredients from the low pollution climate in the Patagonian rainforest. So can you explain to us how all of that works? 
Sure. So this line, and I'm going to flash it. Um, I hope many people have it. I know with COVID, um, not everybody might have their box. So please forgive us. We did our best. <laughs> um, so the collection is really focused on protecting, restoring, and strengthening the skin barrier because skin being the largest organ, if the skin barrier goes, you start losing all your hydration and it's this totally vicious cycle. And so what can damage the skin barrier? Well, pollution causes reactive oxidative stress. And the keyword here is stress. What is reactive oxidative? Those are free radicals, things you can think of ozone, right? Um, ozone turns oxygen into a free radical. Um, and that basically not only affects the microbiome, but it starts affecting that physical barrier of cells that are our wall against the environment. And so the onto complex, which is patent pending, we designed it to really not only soothe irritation by bringing antioxidants um, into the skin barrier, but to reduce inflammation overall, like from sun exposure and particulate pollution too, which we don't think about, but is everywhere. And so it's a novel proprietary formula really from, as you mentioned, mentioned, Steph, the three Patagonian plants that have been known for hundreds of years by the Mapuche for soothing and for reducing redness. So there's plants like Matico, uh, Maki, uh, Mortia, um, which were traditionally used to treat inflammatory diseases. And even today, some of these are used in biotech for coronary disease and reducing stress in the coronary arteries. And then we mix that with hyalur um, hyaluronic acid because you have to hydrate the skin in order to allow it to absorb those antioxidants. So if you have really dry skin, it can absorb all that goodness from the antioxidants that then neutralize those reactive oxidative species and allow your skin to heal naturally. So ultimately, this is about giving your skin enough of a kick that it can heal itself. And that's something we're also seeing is the product and clinical trials, some of them allow your natural collagen to start reproducing, which if your skin is stressed, you know, you can imagine it's just so trying to defend everything, it has no time to rebuild itself. So that's basically the essence of the Onto collection. I mean, that sounds incredible. So wait, can we, okay, that was a lot of information. Can we go back? So what is the skin barrier? Is that like, the skin, my skin as I see it? So basically it is. So the skin barrier, technically called the stratum corneum by dermatologists, it's really the outermost layer of your skin. So it's physically the wall that is protecting your body from the outside world. And it's comprised of two pieces. You can think of them as two defense mechanisms. So there's a biological defense mechanism and the physical defense mechanism. So the acid mantle, which is also the skin microbiome, so it's confusing because all these things have multiple names, that is the biological defense mechanism. And it's a thin film, so that's the outermost surface of your skin. And it's a mixture of the oils, like sebum that are produced on your face, and amino acids present in sweat. So it's this very complex chemical mixture. On top of that, you have the skin microbiome, so trillions of bacteria, both good and bad, that live inside. You can think of it as this like greasy <laughs> layer. Um, and its primary role is to really balance the bacteria on the surface of your skin so that the good bacteria can help defend you and the bad ones don't get out of control. That's what can cause dermatitis. And then the physical, you can think of it as a wall. These are the cells, the corneocytes um, that are surrounded and held in place with oil. So your oily compounds, you can think of them as the mortar in between the bricks. So that's kind of a classical model. I know that people have better models, but we're not gonna go into that kind of scientific rat hole right now. So think of it as you've got a wall, it's held together with your natural oils. And then on top of that, you have like mm -hmm. this chemical layer with oil and amino acid that keep your bacteria happy. And they're kind of that first defense. So they take, they get killed for you. So we've got to respect those trillions of bacteria. They're part of us, they're on our skin, they're in our gut, they're in our mouth, they're everywhere. Okay. And so, so, okay, we need, so we need to protect and keep the microbiome balanced, uh, right? That's yes, the goal. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So the skin barrier is important to prevent infections, but so what does it look like when the skin barrier is healthy? Is that like the glowing skin that we all really want to have? Absolutely. So when it's healthy, your skin is soft, it's smooth, it's plump, it retains water. It's not, you can think of it as it's not like a leaky wall. Um, when it's intact, 
It has the right amount of fats like lipids and natural moisturizing factors. So again, it's not dry. And that the key here is retaining water because you can keep hydrating, but if you're losing it, right, it, you're not retaining that water. And so that's how it becomes flexible and supple. And that's exactly the radiance. You can think of radiance, you know how you have a balloon, when a balloon is totally blown up, it's shiny, right? And if you let air out of the balloon, it kind of becomes not so subtle and all of a sudden it's kind of wrinkly, right? So that's exactly how skin looks. That's radiance right there. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. And so what if that skin barrier becomes compromised? That oh, that's, that. <laughs> that's not a good thing. So if yeah. it becomes compromised, first of all, you get the dull, dry, flaky skin, you know, and the itchiness that everybody hates. Then you start getting fine lines and wrinkles, which is kind of the worst part. And then you can get random acne flare ups and you can get other things. So basically the worst case scenario is when the inflammation gets so bad, it really deteriorates the skin integrity. So mm -hmm. now we're talking like atopic dermatitis, you know, which is a severe form of eczema. Um, you're itchy, you're irritated, you're red. And if you don't treat it, those scaly patches can start cracking and then they start weeping. And, you know, kind of like that yellowy fluid you see on some people that can cause pain, embarrassment. It is just not good. Oh my gosh. So the skin seems, I mean, the way that you talk about it, like, you know, the, the, when the skin's compromised, it sounds really scary, but how quickly can you heal something like that? Like, is it like a quick process or it takes a while, you know? <laughs> There's, there's no easy answer to that because it depends on your general health. Like if mm -hmm. you're a diabetic or you have an autoimmune disease, it can take quite a long time and a lot of effort. Um, okay. If you're healthy, it also depends on your age. So if you're in your 20s, your skin turns over in about three weeks. So, you know, if you go to the derm, you apply a lot of Aquaphor because that's usually they'll, they'll make you put some petrolatum because that helps you. You basically, if you don't have that natural barrier, you make that with the Aquaphor. Um, to retain the moisture so your skin can heal. Um, and that's about two to three weeks before you actually start getting some comfort. Now you can have cortisols and other, you know, um, prescribed prescription creams put on for immediate relief, but they don't solve the long-term problem. If you're like me in your fifties, it can take about eight weeks. Mm. So that's a really good reason for keeping yeah. it healthy because it's like a slippery slope. Mm. Once it starts going, um, you're in a world of hurt. Yeah. Yeah. But it is regenerative. So I think that is really encouraging. And especially with products like this that are working to heal, you know, that's so important. Okay. That's cool. Good to know. I got to make so a note. goal with this is to never have you get to that point where you fall off the cliff. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So here's another word that I hear all the time that I'd love for you to explain to us. Um, okay. So microbiome. So in May of 2020, it was announced that you guys achieved a microbiome certification. What does that mean? Okay. Um, <laughs> there's a new certification over in Germany and it was started by Kristen Neumann. She's a microbiologist and she was looking at all these products and all these products were making claims that they're microbiome friendly. And I think Kristen got annoyed and fed up and decided that she would create a standard where in the lab, there's a series of four different tests that she does on like microbiome diversity, how much of the microbiome is killed, you know, the differences in different populations. And so she runs a product through those four tests and gives them a microbiome score. And if you're under two, you pass. If you're over two, you don't. And she was actually shocked at the number of products that didn't pass. And so what's good is then those companies can go back and they can redevelop them. Now, people, you know, what, what is the microbiome? Well, it's basically, as we said earlier, those trillions and trillions of microorganisms that live on our skin. I know it sounds gross, but there's about a thousand species of bacteria, about 80 species of fungi. Yep, we have fungi on our skin. <laughs> and the majority are totally harmless, you know, to a healthy individual. And some are even beneficial, like health promoting. Others mm -hmm. are not so good. Those are the pathogenic ones that, you know, can cause acne and other things like Staphylococcus. So um, when it comes to products for the microbiome, you know, 
inherently, we didn't want people to say, oh, we just trust you. We wanted to prove it. And so there's a lot of products that still, you know, whether deliberately or unintentionally have antibacterial effects and can damage the microbiome. And again, if you use these harsh products over and over, you will eventually strip it. The microbiome's really good at recovering. Okay. So it's really, really rugged. So usually if you don't annoy it, in three to five days, it'll be back. The populations will be good. It'll be happy mm -hmm. again. But if you constantly are like, you know, cleansing with harsh cleansers and constantly putting retinol and constantly, constantly, constantly fighting it, at some point it'll just say, I give up. <laughs> yeah. It's so interesting because every time I talk to you, the last time you kind of um, changed my perception of like the word chemical, or I think, I think that was the word, right? Because yeah. it, it, it tends to get like this negative connotation, but there are certain things that are actually good and that's not always a negative thing. And so here I'm thinking like, oh, bacteria, we think, oh, this is bad. This isn't something that we want, but really it is kind of a necessary thing to keep healthy skin. Exactly. And with mask wearing and constant hand sanitization, think of the hand sanitizer. That's amazing at killing everything because you don't want those viruses but they also kill your microbiome. So that's why we all have dry, scaly hands and we constantly have to moisturize them right now. Oh my gosh, okay, okay. Putting all the pieces together, it's starting to make sense. So I know that, you know, Codex Beauty Labs, it, there's, you guys are so focused on wanting to protect this skin's microbiome. I've heard you talk about it before. Can you elaborate a little bit on um, how your products protect the skin's microbiome? Absolutely. So this is actually one of the reasons we developed our preservation system. We call it Preservax, you know, for good or for bad. <laughs> That's our patented microbiome friendly system. And it actually uses ferments. So it uses, you can think of it, the output of bacteria. So lactobacillus, which you use in yogurt or kimchi or sauerkraut, um, so it uses those ferments, um, propane diol, which is a corn ferment, which is an amazing actually humectant and emollient. Um, it's kind of like a booster. And then we use two organic salts, which you find in everything from soft drinks to salami to um, you know, other kinds of foods to protect against yeast and mold. So we took these four different things, one's antibacterial, one's antifungal, one's against yeast, one's against mold, and then we balanced it so that the concentrations are such that it still preserves the product. So we passed this test called preservation efficacy testing. And what people do is they take your product, they stick bad bacteria on it, and they make sure you kill them within a certain period of time, but that it doesn't total your microbiome. So there's this fine balance between not killing the bacteria on your skin and yet keeping the product and killing the bad bacteria that can cause infections and get into your products. This is also why we don't use jars because mm -hmm. think of the jar, right? Your fingers in there, it get, it's getting dirty. You know, you might you know, spit in it by mistake, your dog might sniff it. I mean, so there's a constant bacterial assault. So that's why we have these airless tubes that we use for pretty much everything. And, mm -hmm. but ultimately anything with water needs to have a preservative system. And that's why we use preservative acts. So it took us a while, but basically it's the first do no harm rule, right? So don't kill your microbiome. Is Preservax then in all of the products? Every cream or gel. Our oil products, right. Our oil products don't contain any water. So if you have an oil product, then you don't need preservative because there's no, the bacteria need water because water has oxygen and they need that to keep surviving. So if there's no water, there's no oxygen molecule, there's nothing. They can't, they can't grow. So if you have a pure oil, but the problem is if you want to moisturize your skin, you need water. An oil will not moisturize. An oil will lock in moisture again by coating your skin. So it's, it's, it's complicated. <laughs> no, this is so great. I'm taking just notes on that really quick. Um, okay, so we're discussing two products today, the Antu Brightening Moisturizer and Night Cream. Um, so I'd love for you to share about the, those two products and to let us know if there are any other products in this Antu collection that we can look forward to. So the collection is six products in total. Um, mm -hmm. It's for all skin types and each product has a complementary special function. 
Uh, so as you said, today we're discussing this brightening moisturizer and that's a protection cream. So first of all, it helps with UV recovery. It refines the appearance of pores, it hydrates, um, but also very importantly, it forms a barrier film against pollution on your skin. So that's really cool. So it doesn't let particulate pollution get into your skin. Um, and then we have the night cream, which is more of a recovery cream. So it's a very rich nourishing cream. It also hydrates but it's clinically tested to leave skin soft and radiant. We will be launching for more. And um, I, know, I know you have some other ones, but we can't talk I about them. I have right here. <laughs> <laughs> <I'll> show them. <laughs> I know, I just got them and I'm so excited. I know it's you're the first like in the new, world. New, like very new, new. To, I know, you are the I first in the world. Yeah. And the second person who's getting them is Sir Richard Branson over on Necker Island for next week. So you are the first. You know, just me and Richard Branson, same, same. It's fine. Um, so one thing that I uh, loved about this um, Antu collection was this new um, the efficacy label that you guys are adding to your boxes. And I think that's really, really important and really cool. I think there can sometimes be um, a stigma around like, clean products that aren't efficacious and these are and you work very hard to make sure of that and I'd love for you to speak on these new efficacy labels that are on all of the new boxes. Absolutely. So our products are basically designed and geared to deliver specific functionality. You know, bio is hydration, this is anti-inflammation. So every collection has its own purpose. Um, but basically, um, we have to do efficacy testing because I'm not going to make a claim and not be able to support it with data. So every single, every single product is tested. It's carried out in a third party clinical facility. It's supervised by a dermatologist and a toxicologist. There's instrumentation that we use that is basically accepted by all the derms. It's used in their literature when they publish papers. And we basically measure very specific skin parameters and in a quantitative way on at least 35 people. Now, sometimes people fall out of the trial, so we end up with maybe 32 or 33, but the goal is to have a statistically meaningful sample as well as on a diverse population of skin colors and skin types. Mm -hmm. And so then we wanna communicate this as clearly as we can in an easy to read format. And so that's why we created this efficacy panel on the carton. So there's one on the outside, and then I'm going to basically do something horrible. I'm going to just rip this apart really quickly. <laughs> And I'm sure, you know, I, I would urge others to not be so brutal with their carton. But the reason I want to do this is that here on the inside of the carton is actually the full data set. So we publish the entire clinical trial. So whether or not we got a result, whether or not the result was positive or negative, you will see everything we did as well as any parameters that are not relevant. So on the outside, you have basically the summary of what it's supposed to do and you can trace and then we have like a chart. Every measurement goes to a word. So if we say plump, you know. If we say hydrate, you know. And then we tell you what instrument we used and what the data was. So it's very, very clear. Yes to brand transparency. I love that. Thank you for doing that. It's so helpful for the consumer, you know, especially people who want all of that information and who want to learn and who want to, you know, invest in these types of products that we know have the data to back it up. It's really important. So thank you for doing that. And I know that the BIA collection had like, I don't know, five different certifications. It was EWG verified, eco certified, something Cosmos organic, vegan, cruelty free. Um, are all of these products, um, also certified by the same groups? Absolutely. So we we totally voluntarily work with these third-party independent bodies. We think it's really important, again, not to just say, oh, we're vegan. We mm -hmm. send our formulations. We send all the suppliers. They actually audit. So these, you know, Leaping Buddy audits it for animal cruelty. Vegan audits it that there's no animal processed or animal pieces in the manufacturing process. Um, mm -hmm. We do microbiome, that's basically the lab test. Um, EcoCert Cosmos, this is actually EcoCert Cosmos Natural. Um, and then we also obviously work with the EWG because again, they go through everything and it's just another pair of eyes. And the way I see it is, we're not trying to chess beat. 
with having mm -hmm. said we have five of these on every single one and nobody else does. No, it's more about saying, look, we've done our homework and we've let other people look at our work and review our work. And sometimes they catch things like the EWG has caught things where we had to go back and ask the supplier to analyze the heavy metals, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure there wasn't arsenic, you know, in their clay. And so it's important. It's an important kind of secondary check. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. And I'm so glad that you do that. And you do it for every single product, not just your hero product. That is what I learned. There is a loophole there sometimes. And you guys, you you are honest and transparent and you make sure that every single product is certified and checked. And I really appreciate that, you know, as a, a consumer, um, it's so important. Um, and then another pillar that I absolutely love about Codex is the sustainability and the packaging. Um, these tubes look similar to the Bia tubes. Are they also made from the green, how do I say it, polyethylene? Did polyethylene, right? yes. These are also green polyethylene and these cool. are also airless. So they're also single way. Um, so as you know, Steph, traditional polyethylene is made from fossil fuels, oil, natural gas. Um, these are made from sugar cane. So basically why are, is that important? The sugar cane fixes carbon dioxide from the air. So that reduces greenhouse gas emissions. And so that's why basically we wanted to keep working. We work with an amazing company in Brazil um, and we didn't wanna use anything made on fossil fuels. They're also recyclable. Um, through the same recycling chain as traditional polyethylene. They're very, they're precise dosing. So you can use all the product in the tube and you're not like, oh my God, I got too much, right? You know exactly you're gonna have the same dose. So you can have two pumps or three pumps or one pump, depending on where you're putting it. And so all these tubes have the carbon footprint standard. Again, we go to a third party. They analyze everything about the manufacturing with our manufacturer. We work with them and they have the stamp of approval and it's an internationally recognized certification body and i'm excited about working with you in the future to go carbon neutral yes oh my gosh and the cartons as well are also sustainably made correct absolutely the cartons they have this you can see the stamp um kind mm -hmm. of in the back and that's sustainable forestry certification they're totally compostable so yes, we're maintaining our standards across the board. It literally says seriously sustainable, right? <laughs> yes. I love that. <laughs> we're very serious. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Um, okay, so let's um, finish up, I guess, by talking about something that's really important is biodiversity um, and the importance of the protection of biological diversity. Can you elaborate on that a little bit for us? Sure, and I know you're doing a lot of work in this area too. So um, even though the US has never ratified the Nagoya Protocol, um, we believe in following the Nagoya Protocol. Interestingly, Chile has also not ratified it. So what is the Nagoya Protocol? People might be wondering. It's basically um, fair and equitable sharing of benefits when you utilize biological diversity. It was um, created and adopted in October of 2010. Um, and then entered into force in 2014, many countries have still not ratified it. And what it really is, it's a transparent legal framework to effectively implement one of three objectives. And it's really the fair and equitable sharing of benefits when you utilize genetic resources. So in our case, for example, since we work with the ethnobotanists in different countries, they have access to tribal medicine. This is, these are the genetic resources of the plants in that country. And so we wanted to respect the protocol. Um, and so we've created an indigenous royalty program for ONTU, which came into effect actually in March this month. Um, we're implementing it through our partner and active over in Chile. 1% of all ONTU sales will go directly to this royalty program every quarter. And you know, I'm, you know, I'm excited that we can talk about this more in the future. And I'm excited to get your input because I know you're the expert on this. So that's we'll incredible. I mean, you guys are so thoughtful with everything from the product development to the sustainability, the packaging, everything, you know, the give back, all of it. Um, the preservation is so important. So thank you so much for being such a thoughtful, you know, and a thoughtful person, first of all, and a thoughtful brand and for blessing us with all of this knowledge today. Um, I guess let's just let everyone know where and when we can get these amazing products. 
Absolutely. So the first place I have to plug our own website. So codexbeauty.com. Um, we have websites now internationally. And then we're very excited that in Australia and New Zealand, we're going to be at Sephora next month. Um, in the UK in May, we're going to be at Cult Beauty. So super excited. In Europe, we're just launching the websites on Zalando and Nosy Bay, Pan-European, Canada. We just launched last week on Hudson Bay. And again, globally, codexbeauty.com. That's our home. Amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time today. This is awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Steph. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for joining us, everyone.